Have you ever been threatened with a fiery furnace? I'm going to assume you probably have not. But we do have occasions when our faith is tested. Our society excuses and at times expects a certain amount of lying, cheating, impurity, and other sinful behavior. How do we respond when we're tested? Daniel chapter 3 tells the familiar story of how three men acted when their faith was tested. Daniel chapter 3 verses 13 through 18 centers on the confrontation that resulted when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow down and worship an image on the plains of Dura. The three young Hebrews were confronted by a powerful king with a test of their faith in God. In addition, a powerful king was confronted by an all-powerful God. Before we discuss the confrontation, we will consider the events that led up to the confrontation. And we will also look at what occurred after the confrontation. And so first we notice the prelude to the confrontation. Daniel chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its breadth 6 cubits. <coughs> He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Stafford North describes how Nebuchadnezzar, the ruler of the world's greatest empire of his day, became a great builder. Among his accomplishments were the Hanging Gardens, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and the beautiful Ishtar Gates, an extraordinary entrance street and gate into the city. Also built were palaces and government buildings. Nebuchadnezzar decided to build an image in the plain of Dura outside the city of Babylon. The image was 90 feet high and 9 feet wide. It was probably built of glazed bricks and covered with gold. That would be 3,240 feet of gold, square feet of gold. Some think the image was like an obelisk. The image was surpassed in height in the ancient world only by the Colossus of Rhodes, which was another of the seven wonders of the ancient world. At the end of chapter 2, things were going great for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were made administrators over the province of Babylon. That would soon change. Nebuchadnezzar decided to invite all the government officials to the dedication of the image of gold. When everyone had assembled, a command was given that at the sound of music being played, everyone must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Chapter 3, verse 5. The penalty for not doing so was to be thrown into a blazing furnace. Chapter 3, verse 6. Now this wasn't a problem for the majority of the people. They worshiped many gods. Idolatry is always adding new gods. Jack Lewis observed, most ancient religions were broad-minded and had no problem with adding a new worship. But the Jewish religion was exclusive. Hence, Jews refused to worship other deities. In fact, the Jews were in captivity in Babylon because of their idolatry. Some astrologers made an accusation to King Nebuchadnezzar concerning Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. According to the accusers, the three men, pay no attention to you, O king. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Next we come to the confrontation, chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. The king is furious with rage. The men are brought before him. He wants to make sure the charge is true. Joyce Baldwin summarized, Justice demanded that the three men should not be condemned on hearsay alone. And therefore, despite his furious rage, Nebuchadnezzar gave them opportunity to recant. It was imperative that the great king should not lose face 
before the magnificent array of international delegates, and he defied any god to deliver them from the hands of his Babylonian majesty. This shows human pride taken to its logical conclusion, saying, Thou shalt have no other god but me. So Nebuchadnezzar, he's furious, but he's going to be fair. Nebuchadnezzar says, if the men are ready to fall down and worship the image, the image that he had made, he says, very good. Chapter 3, verse 15. And the king then threatens, but if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. And notice his next statement. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Nebuchadnezzar was a powerful king, all right, but he did not have quite the power he was thinking. But what God will be able to deliver you, rescue you from my hand? Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego reply that they will not defend themselves. They tell the king that they will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up, chapter 3, verse 18. They affirm that if they are thrown into the blazing furnace, that the God they serve has the ability to save and rescue them. Our God can save us. But then they add an additional great statement of faith. But even if he does not, but even if God does not save them, they will not worship an idol. They will remain true to God no matter what. Early in church history, Cyprian commented, they believed that they might escape according to their faith, but they added, and if not, that the king might know that they could also die for the God they worshiped. For this is the strength of courage and of faith to believe and to know that God can deliver them from present death and yet not fear death, nor to give way, that faith may be more mightily proved. Joyce Baldwin puts the faith of the three Hebrews into perspective. They do not doubt the power of their God to deliver them from the king's furnace, but they have no right to presume that he will do so. Stafford North writes, They defied the king's order and stood firmly for what they believed. As they had done earlier regarding the king's food, they determined that their course of action, what their course of action would be, and were ready to stand on that action regardless of the consequences. Daniel Wood said, The young men recognized that God's, God's will might be different from what they would find pleasant, and they were willing to have it so without complaint. Carl G. Howey analyzes, humanly speaking, there was no possibility of deliverance from the fiery furnace. The cause was hopeless. Just looking at it on a human level, the king's powerful, all powerful. The furnace is there. What the king says is what is going to be done. That was the human point of view. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had con courageously confronted the great king's challenge. The king did not think there was a god that could deliver Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from his power. But he would soon find out. Nebuchadnezzar would soon have a confrontation of his own. And so next we notice the postlude to the confrontation, verses 19 through 30. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated, and he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and 
they were thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was urgent and the furnace overheated, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace. The attitude of King Nebuchadnezzar towards the three Hebrews changed. Tripper Longman III observes, the one who in his pride has created an image with the purpose of assuring uniform loyalty finds his own image provoked beyond control. He tried to give the three young men a chance to do what he said. They said, we won't do it. We're not going to worship you. And so he became even more fierce, we might say. He ordered that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Well, seven times could be an idiom, meaning just get it as hot as possible. Edward J. Young described, through an opening at the bottom of the furnace could be heated, and the men within could be seen. But the men were cast into the furnace from an opening at the top. Three men were thrown into the furnace and fell into it. As a youngster, I remember being quite impressed that the soldiers who threw the three men to the furnace died from the flames. And I'm still impressed with that. There was just no way that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could escape certain death, humanly speaking. Well, Nebuchadnezzar is watching the scene expecting to see these three men scream in agony as they are burned to death. Shouldn't take very long, should it? But what he sees is far different. And he sees not three men, but four walking around in the fire. And he sees that they are unbound and unharmed. And that raises the question, who was the fourth man? Well, it was probably an angel. It was one who was like a son of the gods, is what the text says here. And a little later, Nebuchadnezzar says, an angel delivered you. But God was with them in some way as they were in the furnace. He delivered them. Well, Nebuchadnezzar then calls to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out of the furnace. And they gather a crowd. <laughs> these three men thrown into a furnace that should have killed them instantly walk out of it. Well, apparently, the fire had destroyed the ropes that bound them. But they were unharmed. Not a hair of their heads was singed. And they didn't even smell like they had been near a fire. You know, if you go near fire, it'll get on your clothes pretty quick. They didn't smell like it at all. Well, earlier, Nebuchadnezzar had asked, then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? The king now has the answer to his defiant question. We notice that when he calls the men to come out of the furnace, that he calls them servants of the Most High God. Nebuchadnezzar knows many gods, he thinks, makes himself a god. But he recognizes that these three men worship the Most High God. He praises the God of the three men. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Chapter 3, verse 28. God is always in the fiery furnace of man's need and is adequate for the most helpless situation. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego confronted a great king but realized there was someone greater than a king. And the king came to realize that there was someone greater than himself. 
we face many confrontations to our faith. Some call us, call for us to deny our faith in God. They call on us to worship false gods, such as power, money, or pleasure. Jim McGuigan suggested several excuses Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have offered when challenged by King Nebuchadnezzar. Here's the things they could have said. We are only three. What can three do? We are young. What can the young do? We are away from home. How can this be expected of us? Everyone's doing it. Why should we dissent? If we don't bow, we'll die. But if we do, we can live long, useful lives for God. We know it's only an idol, so why shouldn't we just go through the motions? Well, those excuses would have been unacceptable then. And they are unacceptable today when our faith is challenged. We must believe that our God has the ability to deliver us from any situation. But even if he does not, we must remain faithful to him.